Gravel Tech fans rejoice. Today we have got a buffet of dirt-ready machines for you to lust over from the inaugural UCI Gravel World Championships. Except, brace yourself, some riders weren't even on gravel bikes. In fact, men's winner Gianni Vermiche was riding Canyon's new Ultimate CFR road bike with a set of gravel tyres swapped in. That's right, road and gravel tech clashed at the gravel worlds. With riders facing fast conditions on the hard-packed course, aero-optimised gravel bikes and road bikes shod with gravel rubber were the order of the day in Italy. But before we take a closer look at some of the tech from the first gravel worlds, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? What did you make of the first Gravel World Championships? Is it even a gravel race if it's one on a road bike? Let us know in the comments. Let's start by looking at the winner of the men's race, Belgium's Gianni Vermiche. The 29-year-old soloed to victory riding a road bike. Vermiche attacked with 10 kilometres remaining aboard the new Canyon Ultimate CFR fitted with Vittoria Terreno Dry tubeless gravel tyres. It was a race dominated by World Tour pros rather than gravel specialists, and this was reflected in the equipment choices. Despite Canyon offering two gravel platforms in its range, the Grail and the Grizzle, Vermiche and Matthew Vanderpoel opted for the new Canyon Ultimate, which was only launched in September. It's an evolutionary update of the previous Ultimate, with subtle aero tweaks and, crucially as far as this race was concerned, increased tyre clearance. Canyon quotes a maximum tyre clearance of 32mm for the new Ultimate, but Vermiche's mechanic squeezed in 35mm rubber at the rear and 33mm at the front. The Vittoria Terreno dry tyres used by Vermiche were a popular option across the men's and women's elite races at the gravel world, and are amongst the best gravel tyres we've tested. If you would like to know more about the best gravel tyres we've tested, there's a link in the video description. Vermiche ran the tyres tubeless on a set of low-profile Shimano Dura-Ace C36 wheels. Vermiche's gearing was representative of the fast course, with the Belgian opting for a 2x Shimano Dura-Ace road setup over a gravel-specific group set. Vermiche paired semi-compact 52-36 tooth chainrings with an 11-34 tooth cassette. Other spec details included Canyon's Aero Cockpit with a 110mm equivalent stem and a handlebar that can be adjusted between 390 and 430mm. If you look closely, you can also see a Vittoria pit stop kit mounted to the Elite Prism bottle cage mounted to the down tube. Multidiscipline star Pauline Ferrand Prevot the current XE short track and marathon world champion in mountain biking outsprinted Olympic XC medalist Sina Fry to pull on a fourth rainbow jersey of 2022. She did so atop the new BMC Kios, which was only launched last month, arising as the Swiss brand's take on a lightweight aero-influenced gravel bike. If it looks to you a bit like a BMC team machine souped up for gravel racing, well, that's because it is. The Kios shares its line with the team machine road bike, notably the angular head tube, chunky down tube, and tapered top tube. The Kios also has a suitably low claimed weight of 910 grams and uses BMC's ICS integrated cockpit, but adds clearance for 44mm tyres and gravel geometry, combining a long reach with a short stem for front wheel stability and fast steering. Despite its low weight, BMC says the frame has been reinforced in areas where it will be exposed to the rough and tumble of gravel racing. Beyond the frame and cockpit, the Kaios's aero enhancements continue with BMC's aero core bottle cages. These are similar to those found on the Time Machine and Team Machine road bikes and are integrated with the frame to apparently smooth airflow. Ferran Prevot's bike was equipped with a one-by drivetrain for the gravel world, combining a 40-tooth SRAM red chainring and a red ETAP electronic rear derailleur, and what looks to be a 10-44-tooth to SRAM Explore cassette. The rolling stock comes from French brand Duke Racing Wheels, shod once again with 35C Vittoria Torino Dry tubeless tyres for the fast and flat Vincenza course. 
Between the men's and women's races, the entire fleet of specialised endurance, road and gravel offerings featured. That gives you some indication of the tech choices faced by riders on a course that was more representative of Strada Bianche than some of the gnarlier gravel-specific events out there. The women's podium was rounded out by Saina Fry and Chiara Tioche, with the former choosing the Roubaix Endurance road bike and the latter riding the Diverge gravel bike. Meanwhile, in the men's race, South African rider Matt Beers finished 17th on the Specialised S-Works Crux. Let's start this specialised three-pack by looking at the silver medalist, Sina Fry. With the best endurance bikes now featuring generous tyre clearance, a change in rubber can turn a road bike into a gravel light bike. That's the case with Fry's bike. Utilising the 33mm official clearance of the Roubaix with specialised Pathfinder Pro Gravel Rubber in a new 32mm size. These were fitted to 50mm deep Roval Rapid CLX2 wheels for an aero advantage. Like Ferran Prevost, the drivetrain components come from SRAM, but Fry's Roubaix uses a 2x setup with a double crank set. It's also worth mentioning that Peter Sagan and Daniel Oss both rode the specialised Roubaix in the men's race. Meanwhile, Tioce opted for the more conventional gravel choice in the specialised stable, the Diverge. Like the Roubaix, the Diverge uses specialised Future Shock headset system, but gains additional tyre clearance and more relaxed geometry for gravel riding. The Diverge has clearance for tyres up to 47mm wide. Given the Italian was only running 32mm wide tyres, that leaves plenty of room to spare. As for the drivetrain, it was one by here, but this time in a mullet configuration, with row components at the front and mountain bike components at the back. That meant pairing a 42 SRAM Force crankset with a SRAM Eagle XX1 Eagle Access rear derailleur and a huge 10 to 52 tooth cassette. The final specialised to be ridden at the inaugural Gravel World Champs was the Crux. Launched last year with the claim of being the world's lightest gravel bike, it takes its cues from the Athos road bike, with round, non aero tubes and an old school aesthetic. The frame has a claimed weight of 725 grams, and there's no sight of the Future Shock headset suspension seen on the Roubaix and Diverge. Instead, simplicity is the name of the game here an external bottom bracket, conventional seat post collar, and no additional mounting points beyond space for a third bottle on the underside of the down tube. Beers rolled on Roval's Terra CLX gravel wheels, which feature a 25mm wide internal rim and a set of unmarked specialised S-Works tyres. Could this be an unreleased model? Get your magnifying glasses up and let us know what you think in the comments. Lachlan Morton has established himself as something of a crossover star for EF Education Easy Post, taking on the World Tour Road Team's alternative race calendar in a series of gravel and mountain bike events, including Unbound and the Leadville 100. It was little surprise then to see the Australian on the start line in Italy, riding to 18th place aboard this Cannondale Super 6 Evo SE. The Super 6 Evo SE was designed exactly with events such as this in mind. It's a go-fast gravel take on Cannondale's long-standing Super 6 Evo road machine. Launched in August 2021, the Super 6 Evo SE shares a similar frame shape to the road-going Super 6, including aero-tuned tube profiles, but with increased clearance for 45mm tyres and a slightly more relaxed geometry that is still intended to retain racy handling. Morton was using Vittoria Terreno Zero tyres, this time in a 38mm size. These were set up tubeless, and we think the tan wall finish looks very handsome on Morton's bike. The tyres were mounted to a set of deep section Vision Metron carbon wheels. As for the drivetrain, the 52 36 tooth semi compact chainrings are paired with a Shimano Dura Ace DI2 front derailleur and second tier Altegra DI2 rear derailleur. There's also a Power to Max NG crank based power meter. He wasn't the only rider on the Super 6 Evo SE. His EF Education Easy Post teammate Magnus Court Nielsen was also riding the Cannondale in Italy. Paint job aside, Court Nielsen rode largely the same bike as Morton. So I won't dwell on the frame, but there are a couple of spec differences to call out. The Dane opted for a slightly different gearing setup, with a 53 tooth outer ring and a 36 tooth inner ring. 
His rear derailleur was also a Shimano Durace Di2 rear derailleur, and he rode on Vittorio Torreno drives, this time in a slightly narrower 35mm width. According to Cannondale, Court Nielsen's wheels were also running Vittorio Airliner gravel tyre inserts for flat protection. Winner of Unbound 2022, Ivar Slick arrived in Italy as one of the gravel pioneers vying for the title in the burgeoning discipline. Unlike Vermeesh, Morton and Court Nielsen, Slick is not affiliated to a pro team. Instead, he races as a privateer sponsored by Villiers, among others. Perhaps unsurprisingly, given his specialism in the discipline, Slick rode Villiers' Rave SLR gravel bike the same machine he rode in Kansas for Unbound and Girona for the Tracker 200. Like the Super 6 Evo SE, the Rave SLR is undoubtedly on the sportier end of the gravel spectrum and is aimed solely at racing. That means fairly aggressive geometry for fast handling, speedy tube shapes and limited mounts beyond the usual two bottle cages. The maximum quoted tyre clearance is 42mm for 700c wheels. In line with many gravel race bikes, if not as generous as gravel bikes aimed at more rugged riding. Slick, who finished 37th, opted for road-like gearing despite his gravel background, with a 5236 tooth Shimano Durace crank set up front paired with an 11 to 34 tooth cassette out back. There was some concession to gravel tech though, thanks to the GRX Di2 derailleurs. Durace and GRX, that's not a combination we see too often. Other spec choices included the new Graf Root gravel wheels from Mike, sporting a 36mm deep rim with a hookless 24mm wide internal width. The Schwalbe G1 RS tyres are a popular choice among gravel racers as a fast option for all-round riding. What did you think of the first UCI Gravel World Championships? Would you choose a gravel bike or a road bike built for gravel? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to see even more gravel videos, then why not watch this episode of Gravel Diaries? In the meantime, if you don't already, don't forget to subscribe to Bike Radar, click the like button, and of course, hit that little bell icon, so every time we upload a video like this, you will get a notification.